Hey, can everybody hear us from the Ocean Pines boardroom in the admin building? Josh, yes. can you all hear me? I'm clear. Okay, great. So good morning, everyone. Uh, today we will talk about and we will vet the, the recommended fiscal year 2022-2023 budget. Um, at this point, obviously the team has prepared it. We've reviewed it with budget and finance. We've uh, taken their guidance into account. We've also had a meeting with the board where, again, we went through everything and took their guidance into account. So today what we would like to do or what we are going to do is present the budget to the association, um, answer any questions that I did. Some some people sent me emails already with their questions, uh, but we will answer questions today uh, along with our analysis and uh, presentation. So with that, I will start. So, you know, basically the approach on when we did this is basically similar to every year. We met with budget and finance. They gave us their recommendations, the board approved. And then Steve and the finance team and everybody else, we did make some changes on how we presented the overall summary schedules. They wanted comparisons to last year's budget, which was fine, and we implemented that. And any other changes or guidance they gave, which were pretty much consistent with prior years. It was a bottom-up budget prepared, which is basically what our scrolls tell us to do. Uh, in addition to that, as you'll see, I did a top-down. Uh, which I do every month uh, for the association anyway. The, 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 I will present an overview today and where we are. And then the team uh, led by Steve and Linda, as you know, they assisted in this, but it was an entire team effort. And we've, we've uh, assembled the, the subject matter experts today to answer any questions or to give the detail. Okay, so with that, um, let's turn the page. Okay, so I, like with any budget or anything, you know, I, from my standpoint, I'm looking at the headwinds and tailwinds, and I always like tailwinds. So I just want to present what I've seen throughout the year, and we've talked about and presented at board meetings. Well, inflation, we all know that even in our daily lives, lives that inflation has raised its ugly head from an economic standpoint, and that does have an effect on the Ocean Pines budget. We'll talk about what the team has done to try to mitigate that and what we've taken into place. Minimum wage, well, that's a statutory increase. And we know that this year, effect, already effective on January 1, uh, we were at 11.75 and now we're at 12.50. And we know over the next two or three years, it's gonna go all the way up to $15. So we had to cover that in the budget. That's obviously an increase from the prior year budget and it's statutory. And then a category that I've implemented since I've been here, mark to market, and especially in this environment, and we all know even uh, regional and nat national, not just here, local, but companies or homeowners associations or corporations have had trouble filling positions, especially in the uh, salary range that we have. So we have a mark to market adjustment. So what that is, is a category where even though I'm increasing certain positions, minimum wage to 1250, I need to pay or we will need to pay to try to get the talent or the people X amount of dollars more. So the team did do a review uh, with every department head, Steve and Kathy and everybody, and we put together an analysis of what we needed to try to fill positions. So if I had a position that's usually minimum wage 1250 and we had to pay for $15, that increases in the mark to market. Proposed legislation, well, I did receive a letter uh, from our attorney uh, talking about a proposed, and it's proposed, nothing is, and it's apparently this has come up before, about homos associations, what they should have in their reserves and some type of uh, balances. We have that in place. Uh, we've had that for several years with the DMA study. We did a review of that this year, uh, DMA Light, and we, the team, have implemented that. I will touch on it, and Steve will get in more detail today where we stand. And, and this, uh, the budget of finance from when I was on there several years ago, and even today, they're saying an acceptable range for us to have in our reserves, general replacement reserves, 22 to 28%. So we will talk about that, and we'll show you how we're actually doing better than that. Insurance premiums, well, I can put that up there. Well, every year that I've been here, you have increases there. Tailwinds. Well, improved performance in amenities and departments. So in amenities across the board, if you listen to the board meetings all year, 
uh, I've told you that we've had organic growth, uh, and now we have some price increases, which you know have been proposed and and, and pretty much at each level of the review, and certainly uh, warrants it with inflation and a lot of these a lot of these amenity memberships or prices have not been increased in years and years. Surplus, we do have a surplus that's realized. Last year, we realized a surplus, Steve, what was it, about a million one, million two? Yeah, million two. Million two. Well, now we can reflect it. I mean, last year at this time, I, I cautioned us on using that when it came up in those questions because it wasn't realized. It won't be realized to the end of the year. And then we have this this year also, and we'll touch on that because we're, we are uh, trending a surplus again this year. And Steve and I will show you on our on how that affects the assessment, what we've recommended, and uh, what we're also doing for the reserves and allocation, which obviously the board would have to approve, uh, but we're going to approach. But the bottom line is that surplus will have, and I'll show you, a positive effect on your assessment for this year and a positive effect on our reserves as well as helping to to pay for the, I, I believe it was the T-Docs that we said last year. Okay, turn the page. All right, so every year that I've done this and, and any time I've done this type of things, what, and I talked about a top down, although this is, and I wanna make sure you, it's clear, this was a bottom up uh, preparation. But if we take it, what I want to do and I, is take it, okay, last year's assessment was 996, and we all know that well, right? But if, you, if I break it down into categories and, and kind of tying it to what I've been saying all year or even in that prior slide, and we'll get into the detail of these numbers throughout the, the next hour or two, but the favorability that we received this year from organic growth and our revenues and how well our amenities did. I want to reflect that. I want to show everybody that that's $94 favorable, which if left alone, we could everything else being equal to our 996 last year, reduce that assessment number. I am recommending a one time assessment reduction from current realized surplus to review re, uh, reviewed every year. And I'll talk, I'll show you more about this on the slide, but so far I believe that the board and BNF definitely signed off on it, but it's taking what surplus we have that we've realized that we certainly, unlike other years, we certainly have trended in the last three years a surplus. Well, let's utilize that. Let's allocate it with board approval, BNF sign off also. We're recommending to put that against our surplus reserves to increase those reserves as well as reduce the assessment, the number here this year is $53, and Steve will show you how we got that and or me as we go through our slides. You offset by statutory and mark-to-market adjustments and inflation, right? I talked about the headwinds, and it has a big, it's a big number. And that number also includes the merit increases that we normally have, as well as this year, and this has been uh, well vetted, the fire department for safety, and for you know being able to man the positions, it came out to an increase of thirty-eight dollars on the assessment for the fire department. So they, you know, in the past, they volunteers or or part-time people that they were able to utilize from other places this year, um, mm -hmm. that has changed for them as well as some medical some medical benefits uh, that the new team members or people that are on the staff have uh, now asked for. So $38, that's in the 76, obviously, that would be an increase to the assessment. When you take these three numbers, the proposed, the proposed or now recommended budget assessment is $925. Or a decrease, Steve, of what, $71? Yes. Okay, I want to highlight, because last year I didn't <laughs> highlight on this slide, and um, apparently neither did one of the papers that I worked with, uh, but the waterfront lots bulkhead differential, which would be, Anybody with the, uh, with, I guess, a bulkhead waterfront, they would pay this in addition to 925. There's no increase from prior year. The number stays at 615. Linda will talk to you about that, and Steve will tie it all together for you at the end. Okay, so that's high level. That's what you're looking at today. Turn the page. All right, so let's get into the detail of that summary. Hopefully you can see that there, where I break out a lot of those numbers. Um, but you can see on the top, the top section, the total revenue increase, that's in bold. And you can see if you go through all the line items, that basically across the board, 
every amenity, we have growth. I'll call it organic, and now we, we are recommending price increases. Um, and uh, Steve will talk to you about that and Debbie, but that has a decrease on the assessment. The, the general replacement contribution decreased per DMA study. So we did have DMA light come in this year. We worked with BNF. We worked with the outside consultant who put together this, uh, this DMA study for us, what, four years ago, three years ago. And when we updated it for all the work we did over the last several years, uh, as you know, we did, uh, you know, there was a lot of uh, maintenance and uh, new construction or replacement construction. But the calculation actually, as we fine tuned this, gave us a decrease of $118,000 on the budget or $14 on the assessment. So we have all the paperwork, all the documentation independent supporting that. Bad debt expense, well, last year we increased our bad debt because of the environment, the economy, and there was a lot going on with COVID. And then this year when we reviewed it, and even at the end when we reviewed it, we're at our outside account, and Steve and I feel that uh, we can decrease that now because of our, you know, our history and what we're seeing. And obviously, Rudan uh, up front uh, agrees with that. So that's favorability to the budget compared to last year. Total food and beverage uh, increase in operating income, $9. We'll talk a little bit more about that. The legal fees, uh, legal fees have been going up. Uh, we did review it. Steve and I tried to do a pro forma compared to what we saw happen in this last year. This is the fiscal year we're in now. And we believed we could reduce it by 10,000 or reallocate to the election and the referendum uh, expenses that we believe will possibly increase this year. So it's kind of a rebalance. Um, we tried to do that. Next is the next category, the total wages and salaries. I already spoke to you about that. It's the merit increases along with the, the statutory increases, uh, as well as what we believe mark to market as we try to fill the open positions that we have. The fire department increased $38. Uh, Steve will touch on that when he talks to you about their budget. But again, it's a, it's a, uh, it's a shift in the mix of part-time versus full-time employees as well as people um, being able to get medical benefits. Property liability insurance increase, it's 50,006. Like anything else, uh, sometimes in a budget, you have to do assumptions or review or go with history. Um, that's what we anticipate. We won't get final numbers for what, Steve, a couple of months or whatever, but we have been talking to the, um, brokers. to the brokers, thank you, Steve. And uh, that's where we will believe we are right now. Referendum potential costs, like I said, Steve and I reallocated, rebalanced. Uh, so that would obviously be an increase on the assessment and certainly open to uh, to review depending on what uh, the board's deciding to do over the next couple of weeks. Here's the category, one time, and I call it a one time, but the assessment reduction from current surplus. We're utilizing it and we'll get into this. And we'll show you where it comes from, where it is on the balance sheet. This is realized money from last year. So we're, we're saying that we, we recommend it, and so far it's passed each level of review, $450,000 to put towards the assessment. Again, this, this would be depending each year on the prior year's um, performance and where we are at the end. So that would have a decrease of 50 in this year, in this proposed assessment or referendum, asset, uh, re, I'm sorry, uh, let's call it a proposed, recommended assessment, $53 decrease for a total net assessment Decrease to seventy one dollars nine seventy five uh, nine twenty five. Turn the page. Okay, so this is a schedule. This is a tool we put in several years ago to monitor our balance sheet, our replacement reserves, so that we can have a tool and we can show everybody where we're at. And we can see for ourselves and we can manage. Uh, obviously, on you know, when we prepare our budget, because depreciation or contribution for this is a big number. But this schedule ties it all together, plus the DMA study and the review that our entire team does, at least they've been doing it for me every year, that we can see exactly where we are on the recommended 20, and you can go down to the yellow, Steve highlighted it, the 22 to 28. Uh, we're certainly within that range, and certainly over the next five years. This year, and I will talk to you about the year, I will talk to you about the um, what we did as far as a review on the DMA light, and we, uh, we've we pushed back 
the, the irrigation system in at least one year. So that'll help us to get into that favorability, along with the surpluses that we are generating this year, if we do realize them, will certainly be high. So Steve and I and the rest of the team feel comfortable that we are adhering, and it's certainly the best I've seen in my 12 years here if on our, our reserve balance is general replacement. All right, turn the page. All right, so the, turn the page. All right, so this is a new slide. Um, it's more reconciliation to me to explain everything that I just told you. And again, the team will get into more detail, but up the top left corner, that's basically showing you what our accumulated surplus or deficit balances uh, each year in, in the estimate for this year. If you go back to uh, fiscal year 2018 is the, you know, the million six deficit, right? And, and so we have worked that. That number has come down. In the assessment several years ago, the board or we recommended or proposed and the board, you know, put in, we did have a number in the assessment to offset that operating deficit over X amount of years. I believe it was five. We didn't need all of that. Probably half was covered by that piece, which was in the assessment. But from the operations that we've over the last three years, we decreased the rest of that deficit just from operations surplus. All righty. And then now you see, obviously, now that the deficit has been covered, now you're seeing a surplus that now we can allocate, hopefully, each year or this year, or definitely this year, to the assessment as well as your reserves. So if you could just go back to that slide for one second, you could see the balance. Thanks, thanks, Josh. So there's the 450,000 I spoke to you. If you just go down, that I just spoke to you about the assessment. We said we were going to replenish the reserves, the road reserve, 350,000. Steve has done that. And then remember the T docs. We're going to pay for the T docs out of that realized now surplus from last year. So we didn't put any of the T docs or anything in there for the budget last year, anything that affect the assessment, because we believed that we would be able to cover it, and we did. And then you, Steve has the remaining balance there, and he'll talk more about that. All right, so that basically, I've given you an overview from the P&L, as well as your balance sheet. And anybody in finance, you know the P&L does tie to our balance sheet. But that gives you an overview of where we are. With that, Steve and the team will talk to you all about each department, uh, the amenities, and where we are compared to last year's budget and the forecast. All righty, Steve. Okay, so uh, just to introduce um, all the all the budget document pages should be out on the website um, for accessibility for all. Um, for those of you that were not a part of the BNF or the or the board meetings that we went through each individual page. Um, Want to flip the page, please, Josh. <laughs> Thanks. Um, so all of these uh, divide. This is just a copy of the divider tab, but all these all these sections are represented uh, out on the website. Um, you know, I, we do have the budget <coughs> budget experts in the room for aquatics, golf, marina. So you know, any any specifics geared, any questions that we have, we can certainly direct to them. Um, just to hit it, I guess from a from a high level. Um, you know, John alluded to the organic growth. So the primary adjustments within each of these departments uh, on the amenity side, um, you know, is certainly pricing increases and then organic growth. Um, <clears throat> if you look at slide number two, I believe, Josh, which is the reconciliation. Sorry, keep going. Three, four. <laughs> Okay, so this is really this really sums everything up. So I, I kind of want to be able to talk to this. Um, you can see that we have five hundred thousand dollars in improvement from the assessment, which is made up of <clears throat> all the various department departments breakdown. Um, you can see that we have one hundred twenty-five thousand dollars on the golf side. This was this was put in the original. Uh, budget submission that, that went to the BNF, um, and that's just greens and, and cart fees uh, revenue increase. Um, on the aquatic side, we have about $180,000 uh, 
additional, and this is all versus the budget. Um, you can see that $95,000 is based on volume or the organic growth as we're calling it. And then the other $90,000 is uh, related to actually pricing. Um, so we're gonna break down the pricing sheet, but Kathleen, we went from 10 and eight up to 13. What's for residents for we daily. Went from six and eight to eight and 10. Thank you. And for non-residents, we went to 12 and 15. Thank you. Okay. So aquatics represents about $185,000 of revenue growth between the pricing and the volume. Uh, on the beach parking side, we have about $38,000 of organic volume growth. And then we have about $35,000 that's attributed to the $15 increase that we did across the board for all uh, types of permits. <clears throat> we have a $30,000 increase to our right of way revenue. That's included in the admin section of the uh, of the binder or the uh, <clears throat> the sections that are out on the website. Um, that is based on the trending. That's the money that we get in from Comcast as well as Mediacom for the right of way uh, uh, fees revenue. That went from about 160,000 up to $190,000. Um, so that basically decreased our assessment $4 by, able <clears throat> by being able to recognize that. Um, now on the racket sports side, we had some pricing <clears throat> changes throughout the budget process. We had uh, some proposed increases and then we ended up dialing those increases back slightly. Um, we also added in membership increases, pretty much 5% across the board is what we agreed to um, at the budget meetings uh, with the board. And <clears throat> basically the 5% increase within racket sports is about $6,000. Uh, the racket sports drop in pricing and volume is about $30,000. Um, in general, 5%. Uh, boat slips. Uh, so that's on the, on the marina side. We had boat slip. Uh, we, we increased the pricing there 4%. That equated to about $8,000. So when you add all that revenue growth, <clears throat> as well as the pricing, we get about $500,000 increased budget versus budget. Um, that's going to be a direct reduction of the assessment of close to $60, $59. Okay. Good. The, uh, John alluded to the, the uh, DMA. Uh, that's actually a reduction of about $100,000. Uh, and that's, that's solely based on the, uh, uh, <clears throat> the DMA study that, that came back. I mean, that, that is the actual contribution that's recommended per all the latest and greatest um, assets that, that DMA studied within the, uh, within the association. Uh, the bad debt expense decrease, that, that is now in the admin budget. It represents $50,000 of, of anticipated expenses this year, which is down from $150,000. Ruth Ann and the, uh, 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 the assessment membership office has been doing a great job of uh, managing those expenses down each year. So we've seen the trending go from a couple hundred thousand dollars that we had to build in our budget several years back all the way down to $50,000 this year. So that represents a $12 increase. The, uh, the food and beverage change in operating income, you can see $72,000, $9 increase. That's the combination of the beach club, the yacht club, and the clubhouse grill all together. Um, that $72,000 is a bottom line operating profit um, uh, in excess of the budget that we built last year. Um, it's actually about $70,000 better than the contract target that we have for the Mador company as well. Um, so the, the net result, $9 decrease. Uh, John alluded to the slight legal fee decrease. That's $150,000 down to $140,000. But then it really got offset by the fact that we built in $10,000 to referendum to offset that. Um, so net net between legal and referendum, it's basically a wash. And then, um, so we hit on the salary, or I'm sorry, we hit on the, on the revenues. Uh, we hit on the main buckets in terms of the contributions, bad debts and all the administrative areas. Um, obviously the other headwind that we had to deal with is the salaries that we, we talked about. 
Um, we do have those broken out by individual department, but I'm not going to bore us by going through each individual one. We can all we can all see what those uh, you know salaries equate to in terms of increases. Um, but in total, thirty seven thousand dollars based on the eleven seventy five to twelve fifty. Um, mark to market adjustments that John alluded to forty two thousand um, dollars. A part time seasonal proposed adjustments. Um, is seventy thousand dollars, and then a merit that we have uh, built in at three percent, modestly is one hundred and eighteen thousand dollars total. Total wages and salaries to the budget two hundred and sixty seven thousand dollars. So that's an increase, obviously, in the assessment dollars of thirty two dollars. Um, John talked about the fire department. We do have information out on them. They went up approximately two hundred and fifty thousand dollars, which is uh, primarily a couple new positions and medical increases. Um, there's a lot of detail, but it essentially is due to compensation increases for the fire department. And then uh, the property liability we have in it, that's <clears throat> basically going to be our whole whole package of insurance, which is close to a half million dollars when you add in workers' comp, all of our liability policies, flood policies. Um, et cetera. So there's a lot of insurance out there, but we built in a 15% increase on the property and liability based on the recommendation of our brokers. Um, and that <clears throat> is probably the best number. They said it could be anywhere from 10 to 20% based on our claims history this year. Um, our claims history is, 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 I guess, been okay this year. So uh, the 15 percent was considered to be prudent. Um, and that's that's really from a high level. Um, you know, we can look at each of the individual, I guess, pricing. Uh, Josh, if you don't mind taking it back to the other slides uh, that we talk about the pricing of the memberships and the daily fees. Actually, if you don't mind going back to that other slide on the surplus, um, Josh. Sorry. Yeah, so just to, just to highlight this, like John said, we have $1.2 million coming out of the year. We are um, estimating approximately $1.1 million of favorability this year. Um, so you can see that the assessment reduction, which is also in that reconciliation page, that's the other piece I just wanted to point out, is a portion of that $1.2 million that we have realized at the end of FY21, you know, per the audit report. So $450,000 of that we are using to apply directly to the assessment. The other pieces that you'll see on another slide uh, on reserves um, is we're going to replenish the roads for $350,000 when we took it out and put it to drainage last year. And then we are uh, funding the TDOC. So we have 860000 it looks like, of that $1.2 million designated in the current budget, which still leaves us with 350000 ish from that <clears throat> $1.2 million. Of course, then we still also have the money that we would estimate the end of this year. Um, in terms sure. of your surplus. It's going to go to our admin and general manager line. Sure. Okay, so at this point, and Steve gave you more detail on, on the overall. So at this, we're going to go right down through the budget binder. We have, uh, Josh, if you could jump ahead to the uh, to the index. A couple slides. Just before that. I think he's got to go back, right? There you go. Okay, great. So we've talked about the summary. Let's go down the whole budget binder. The, the team's going to talk to you. They've, they've all broken this out. They're going to talk to you and compare it as the budget and finance asked us to do. Compare it to last year's budget, where what's different, and we've pretty much highlighted all the key items. But let's just go right through this. So we're going to start with admi administration, general manager, and obviously those are all Steve's, and he's going to give you the high level on them. Steve. Okay, so... <clears throat> I guess if you, once again, this admins where bad debts are covered, where accounting fees are covered, legal fees. So I talked about the legal fees coming down $10,000. Uh, I talked about the right-of-way fees in um, 
revenue going up 30,000. So bottom line, <clears throat> net operating, our expenses are going down. I'm sorry. Expenses are going up $7,000 versus the budget. Do we want to go through every line, John? No, just give high level revenue. And obviously, what yours is the expenses. Yeah, just high level. So that's general admin. Okay, so next uh, general manager again is Steve. Let me just call him. May not have been Okay, so general manager, the uh, <clears throat> total expense is three hundred thousand one sixty one. Um, that is down from a budget of three hundred three thousand three ninety one. Main uh, change there is is contract services are down about ten thousand dollars <throat> to the budget. Finance. Change just take this. Finance total uh, bottom line uh, seven hundred eighty six thousand uh, dollars loss versus eight hundred and eleven thousand uh, dollars. The, the main uh, main changes there are reduction in payroll costs. You're going to see that in a lot of the different areas. We had a large uh, medical insurance premium built into the budget last year. Uh, we were able to negotiate, um, as I alluded to at the budget meetings, a, a very, uh, uh, I guess, favorable uh, premium rate with um, uh, with our current carrier through working with our brokers of, of redesigning our plan. So you're going to see some reductions in the medical insurance. Obviously, that's a, a variable rate. I have a, actually a meeting tomorrow to talk about our rates for this year. So we have a, have a number in there, but that's all ultimately... Uh, becomes a variable rate during the course of the uh, last couple months of the year. Um, but net-net, we are down $25,000 in total expenses and finance. So and those are obviously three departments where it's pretty much expense. If you just take them in the aggregate, but based upon everything Steve showed you, the increase for the entire three departments is really less than 3%, well less. So again, management of expenses, Steve and his team and everybody else across the board. All right, good job on that. Mm -hmm. uh, with some um, so we got marketing yeah. and, and public relations. Yeah, you want to go? Uh, go sure. Uh, so we have, we're pretty flat to, to where we are last year, 336 to 342. Mm -hmm. we've, we've seen an influx of revenues uh, mm -hmm. for advertising. That's mm -hmm. the big takeaway there, 61,000 versus 40,000 last year. Good. Good. Okay. okay, so again, the, the department's pretty much flat, even the ones that usually have a lot of expense, and they've certainly grown. Uh, Josh and his team, Julie, they've, they've actually increased the revenue, so good job there. All positive to the assessment, especially compared to a prior budget. CPI? Is that next? CPI, Linda. Good job, Steve. Um, CPI, we relined the revenues um, for the fees um, to get based upon the previous years and the gas and oil um, we did increase due to the inflation of the price of gas and oil so the bottom line is net operating of a negative 71,000 in cpi okay again pretty much flat with the prior years uh, Linda's also going to do general maintenance on, on obviously with our uh, course training and all that Eddie, as you know, and his team are out there with the snow and everything else. So Linda is going to jump in and do general maintenance and public works. Okay, general maintenance. Um, again, we raised the fee for gas and oil due to the inflation of the cost of gas. And that's pretty much the bottom line um, is a negative 730,000 operating, which is in line with previous years. Moving on to public works. Um, we did... Um, Again, raise the gas and oil into inflation. We added 440,000, sorry, 40,000 for road striping of Ocean Parkway. I know that's been a hot topic, so we are putting road striping of Ocean Parkway in the budget for this year. And um, we have 175,000 just for drainage maintenance alone. And then reserves, we have 350,000. Good. 
Okay, thank you, Linda. So again, if you so far, we just went through seven different departments, which are pretty much expense, right? Departments, and they're pretty much flat uh, with the budget uh, from from a year ago. So, just shows you where we're at and why the assessment is coming in the way it is. Thank, thank you, Linda. Um, fire and EMS and police. Uh, Steve will jump in. Yeah. So on the fire, like I alluded to, about two hundred fifty thousand dollar increase uh, compensation. Um, is the main driver there. On the police side. Mm. Yeah, so uh, police is actually up about $50,000. We have salaries uh, increase uh, uh, in there. We also have the body cam contract, right. just to highlight that. Um, that's something that's on the horizon. Uh, it's built in for the last four months of the year. It's going to be um, an outsourced, uh, uh, basically a lease agreement. Lease. Okay, so that's a big question on the body cams. And you know that we, we, we need to do that. The chief has kept us updated on that, worked with Steve. Uh, it is a lease. Uh, it's not a, what's the number on the assessment? It's not a, 15, it's not a lot. It's like $10,000 that's built in there. Yeah, so 10, dollar, yeah. 10, 15,000. Great, Steve. Okay, and then you have the salary increases. The fire EMS, I talked a little bit about that. It's, it's uh, the mix in, in you know, part-time versus full-time. It's all about safety. It is about medical benefits uh, for our first responders. All right, Steve, thanks for jumping in on notice. All right, Reckon Parks. <laughs> so um, as far as Reckon Parks are concerned, our budget is pretty much flat compared to last year. We do have a slight increase due to um, increase in revenue um, for summer camp, um, we had not raised the prices in that in quite some time and um, some increases in the fees that we will charge for special events. Um, obviously, there's payroll changes, but with a little bit of increase in the revenue, some additional um, classes and special events that we'll be doing, um, we think that we'll still come in with a pretty much flat comparison to last year. Um, Rocket Sports. Racket Sports, please, mm -hmm. Debbie. Mm -hmm. um, for Racket Sports, uh, we pretty much have um, made some quite a few adjustments to to that budget from the previous years. Um, there is some increase in management presence. We had received feedback from the the committees um, in reference to someone being there pretty much full time to collect fees. Um, and and we have abided by that request. So we do have someone there which has increased our payroll. Um, we have done a slight increase to our membership fees and our user fees. Um, you know, at the request of the committee, um, we we made some slight changes, but um, everybody seemed to be okay with what the final product is. Um, we have had a lot more maintenance. Um, with Bob being there all the time, so it reflects in our budget um, and making um, huge changes over at the record center and really getting a lot done and a lot accomplished over there um, by having another additional person and by having maintenance there year round. Okay, so in those increases in the expenses there with full time management, all the maintenance we've done, and there are a lot of changes and improvements we've made. It almost got upset with the offset with the increase in revenue, and and Debbie sees that, and we see that getting even more uh, organic growth in the revenue over the next year or two. Mm -hmm. Record parks, rackets. What are you going to do, aquatics? Sure. Okay, I'm going to ask Debbie to jump in. We do. Kathleen was able to come up, but Debbie is going to jump in. Uh, and talk about aquatics, and of course, uh, Kathleen's here also. So with aquatics, um, compared to last year, there is revenue increase and um, expenses that are down um, due to the implementation of um, better business practices on the management of expenditures, um, the organic revenue growth that comes with the price increases. So they've had a lot of change over there this year, a lot of revenue that is coming in. Um, as they move forward, they will have a increase in revenue um, due to the fact that they have not changed daily rates since 2012. Um, they will also have a slight increase in their membership fees. 
they're hope you know with the organic growth that's coming through their daily rates you know will bring in quite an addition to their increase especially with the um there's about 90,000 in increased fees and then with the increase in the volume that makes up the 185 increase that you'll see in revenue I'll just jump out. So in aquatics, you know, and obviously we've had the COVID situation like everybody over the last two years. As I look back on our department, and it's affected everybody here, the departments and the amenities, probably aquatics the most. And I have to say the management, the team down there and everything has it's kind of gets blended in here, but fantastic job down there. And I, I see aquatics moving on the positive side. Also, we're trending very positive over the next couple of years. Good, Debbie. Mm -hmm. Debbie, thank you. Okay, aquatics next up. Golf, golf maintenance, golf operations. A little change here. We have John, uh, John Malinowski is here. He's going to talk to you a little bit about uh, high level on the golf operations and maintenance. Yeah, compared to last uh, last year's budget, uh, we've got approximately 135,000 increase in revenue, uh, primarily just through some increases uh, in our green fees and car fees, a little bit in membership. Uh, on the expense side with maintenance, we know with inflation, um, obviously, um, Steve talked about the, the labor increase and in, um, minimum wage that we expect you know, approximately sixty-five to $70,000 in extra expenses there. Um, but that puts us into a positive uh, for the year I mean, making a little bit of money breaking even, which is uh, great for golf considering how things have happened, worked out in the past. Okay, thank you, John. Uh, one thing I did, and I did get a question from um, from a homeowner, and I, I said, well, I was going to uh, address it today, but I will address it as soon as we finish. But I, I do want to talk about amend what we did uh, as far as for this, uh, this proposed now recommended budget. But I will address that. I did get a question on it promised I would, but let me let, let us finish and then I'll do it with all the amenities. All right, thank you, John. So now we're in food and beverage. As you know, it's the Madwat company and Ralph doing a great job like everybody else. Uh, Steve has, uh, will jump in, you need anything? And he's gonna take you through the food and beverage numbers, and sections. So um, for Yacht Club, we'll start with them, which is section 20 and uh, our bottom line is $94,000, uh, so a slight improvement versus the budget of $88,000 last year. And then for the uh, Beach Club, uh, which ends up being Section 18, and we had a, obviously a record year this year. Of, uh, our estimate's $150,000, but our budget that we built one last year was 97. We ended up coming in for the budget this year in between the two, which we thought was prudent of $123,000 bottom line for the beach club. And then for the uh, clubhouse grill, which is the third piece of the work company, um, net uh, operating profit, approximately $63,000, which is actually a $40,000 increase versus where we were budgeted at last year and uh, fairly in line with where we're estimating to, uh, to end the current year. Yep. So, so overall compared to, to last year on the budget, Steve, they're still coming in favorable. Yeah, so on the walk, yeah, so there's $70,000 uh, versus the last year, which is nine dollars, which equates to $9 uh, okay. reduction of the assessment. Good. Okay, and as I mentioned, I'll talk about the forecast with all the amenities. Okay, what do I have left? Beach, beach, uh, parking. beach parking, beach parking. Who's in on that one, Debbie? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, beach parking this year, we have an overall increase of about thirty-five thousand dollars in parking revenue. Um, obviously, there's also going to be an increase in the payroll minimum wage market adjustment. Um, we did do a slight increase to the permit fee this year based on actual sales and the review by the staff and management, um, we, we chose to increase and that will give you a um, $73,000 increase versus your last budget um, based on an overall increase across the board for per parking permits. <clears throat> okay, so yeah, in the beach park, I, I'm sorry, I was just doing something with the beach park and there, there, there is an increase in the pricing and uh, 
We just sell as many parking spots as we can. It's been great. All right. So with that, I got the Marina left. I know we want to hear from Ron Fisher. We certainly have one of the best Harbor Masters in the business, a rock star. So, Ron, why don't you tell us about Marinas and what you did and uh, where we're looking. How we're looking. Uh, we were a little bit conservative in revenue, uh, primarily because we're at the mercy of weather. Uh, as an example, this year we had 57 days of uh, small craft advisories that, that certainly affected our sales. Although we had a, this one a very good bottom line. Did you take it off? Uh, <laughs> The proposed 125,000 increase in fuel sales revenue, uh, 8,000 increase in slip rentals. Uh, slip rentals went up uh, 4% recommendation in the Budget and Finance Committee. And of course, we're going to have uh, higher fuel sales revenue due to the rising cost of fuel. Uh, I think everyone is quite aware that it just doesn't affect fuel, but it, uh, it affects other oil products. Uh, so we uh, have a proposed bottom line of 197,000 for this coming year. Okay, Ron, thank you. And it's definitely a money maker. So I, I, that's pretty much, we've gone through all the departments, the amenities, we still see we're gonna talk more in, in uh, Linda, about our reserves, about our capital, our capital proposed spend. I do want to talk about prior year budget, our controller reports, which are actual each month. We're up to what we've presented December, and then a forecast for for the last four months. Because, and I, and I did get emails on this, and this did come up. Uh, certainly, Steve and I, when we reviewed the whole thing, and remember, we started this back in September, this whole process. And it is a process over time, and we've certainly learned more about where we are and where we are trending this year, now that it's, you know, February. Um, and we have a better idea because now, you know, we have uh, eight months actual as opposed to four or five. We are, tr we are trending, trending this year, approximately 1,450,000 favorable. And I use the term trending because it's not realized and it won't be realized until we close the year on April 30th. So we're trending and that's a, that is a nice number and it is favorable. Last year we were, we, we came in at what? How much Steve? A million, million one? Million, million Just one. over a million. Yeah. Just over a million, a million one. And at the same time last year, I said, we're trending. We're not realized. Let's wait to the end of the year, see what we realize and then apply it, allocate it, which is what I've done, we've done with the assessment. You saw that line item that we put, that I put, as well as the surplus reserves. And Steve will talk to you and he'll show you that at the end where we we did a reconciliation for you on how much we're allocating there at this point. So obviously this number, if everything's equal in the world over the next four months, and April is a big month for all our amenities. And for us, it just happens to be at the end of the year. So it's very difficult to forecast when that month, or John will tell you, and he probably will, that, you know, if he gets rain on a couple of weekends and Ralph will tell you the same, uh, it, it has a big effect, a couple hundred thousand on revenue possibly. So, look, the ship has turned the last several years. We are positive. But this is pretty much the first couple of years where we have these kind of numbers. So I do have a forecast that's higher for the amenities and the revenue, but across the board, whether it was Ralph, John, Kathleen, uh, Debbie, you know, it, it, we're trying to find a balance uh, of where we could be, and especially that we haven't realized yet. But for those who have written to me, and you're right, if I, if I went through this, and we, it's not even about me now, it's about all of us, we could possibly increase the revenue numbers at probably each amenity. Golf, probably you know a, a nice number, food and beverage, uh, a little bit on aquatics and, and, and racket sports. However, what I've recommended and what we've put as part of this process is that line that I showed you on the reconciliation in the beginning, what I call plus minus account on the assessment, where after we realize, and hopefully it's surpluses and going forward, and that's the way I see this place trending, then we offset what we recommend, and it's up to the board, of course, um, the effect on the budget 
this year it's $53. And, you know, if we do come in with what our forecasts are, we'll have that favorability and that gets built into the next assessment. Now, obviously, we can uh, go either way on these numbers. Um, that's what we've proposed. That's what I believe is is the balance. But yeah, you know, call it softness on the revenue or whatever. But again, that that April number for food and beverage, especially golf, it, it makes a break. And I cannot predict and nobody in this room can predict it. So that's where we are on that. It's been total transparency on it. Um, I'm open to whatever. And I appreciate the people that, that sent me the emails on it. I mean, we've been on it. I've been saying for the last two years that golf will show a profit operating. Give me a little more time and it'll show it, you know, even after depreciation. Same thing goes for everything else. We're moving in the right direction. All righty. So that's what I have on that. I do want to get into the reserves. This is where it ties in, like I said in the beginning, the reserves, the capital, and the overall health of our association with our balance sheet, which Steve will go and get into. All righty. Um, what do you want to do first? Reserves or capital spend? So. Uh, reserves. All right, Steve's gonna he's gonna give you the reserves. If you have my stuff, it's in the back. Okay, I got, I got. You got it. So Steve's gonna talk to you about the reserves. Uh, Josh, if you can uh, go forward, it's towards the end. The reserve schedule that we present at pretty much every month. Yep. There you go. Steve's yeah, yeah. gonna tie everything together now, uh, and then um, Linda will come in and talk to you about drainage bulkheads, roads, which are big numbers in there, and general replacement. So Steve's going to show you how it all fits, and then uh, Linda's going to tie it together for you. Okay. Uh, yeah, so this is the roll forward sheet, as I call it. Um, so it starts with our audited numbers that we, um, you know, <clears throat> excuse me, had in our audit report uh, that was approved back in August. You know, there are balances for replacement of bulkheads, roads, drainage, and our new capital fund. The contributions that we put in this year pre-DMA study, uh, which represented uh, uh, depreciation, you can see uh, we put in about $2.8 million in total. Um, and then we're, of course, generating interest on those funds. Uh, we have about $50,000 estimated for this year. Um, in terms of other contributions, we put in the casino funds uh, that we uh, we get for the local impact grant uh, um, uh, agreement that we get a certain 10% of the uh, gross receipts that, that come through the, uh, uh, the casino. Uh, the Bainbridge grant is pretty much an in and out in terms of a reimbursement for expenses that we incur. The county is then in turn paying us. Um, so that money that you see, $482,000 represents the grant that we received on the uh, on the Bainbridge work that we did within drainage. Um, now these are the estimates of uh, you know this is an estimate from here to the end of the year. So we have four more months of spend, but the majority of spend is out there through December. Um, you can see approximately 1.9 million dollars estimated in bulkheads, which is not capital, and then capital, which is approximately two million dollars between replacement roads, drainage, new capital. Um, you can see our estimated balances and then our proposed budget contributions um, represent what we received from the DMA study on our replacements, including the inflation factor. Um, and then the bulkheads basically gets from the uh, waterfront differential that was uh, touched on in the beginning of the presentation of $615. That number is going to come in to the bulkheads reserve based on that con that bulkhead differential, as well as the $25 standard rate applied to all homeowners. That is where we're getting that contribution. So uh, we have a little bit more interest estimated for this year based on the, the Fed's uh, potentially increase in the rates on our, uh, on our conservative investments that we uh, um, that we primarily do within CDARs. So we have $75,000 built in there. We increase the casino funds based on trending. So you get $450,000 versus the 350. Um, uh, we've been closer to about $450,000 in uh, estimated receipts um, there. And then I 
<coughs> have a separate line for the surplus reallocations. That goes back to the slide where we take the $1.2 million of our surplus that we have in 21, $350,000 we are putting back into roads. And uh, $60,000 is going to go for the TDOCs into that new capital fund. Um, and that represents the work there that we uh, we have to do on the TDOCs. And then Linda's going to go through the capital. The 492, 255, you're going to see the capital detail ties into that 492 of what goes into that spend. And she's going to go into the bulkheads and uh, the drainage spend to get us down to our numbers. Let me jump in first, Linda, before you today. I, so while we're on the schedule and the numbers are there, I just want to point out a couple of things. Let's look at the drainage column. And as you know, the team, BNF, and we've recommended this for years to break out drainage. And this, I believe, is the first or the second year that we've done it. You can see that the additions, we're, we're allocating $400,000 to drainage. This this is in addition to the $175,000 that, that the, the association has had in public works budget for the, for the maintenance that you see us constantly doing the digit, ditches. This $400,000, it's been two years now that we're working on pipes that, that haven't been addressed in 30, 40, 50 years all the pipes under Ocean Parkway with the liners. We've talked about this before. So there is money in there, another $250,000 to bring in that outside company again uh, to work on the pipes. And, and this is at a big savings. But these pipes that have been out there for years, we really haven't done much on them. This is the second year in a row where this board and everybody and this, this team, we've been able to allocate this kind of money there. We didn't do this before, at least not, I, I didn't see it. The 350,000 in roads, well, that's been well documented. That's the casino money. Obviously, Steve, and with some uh, feedback from budget, budget and finance from Tom, you know, we've taken it up and the trend's been, it's coming out into around 450. So we've allocated 100 there into the drainage, the 350 for the roads, plus like Steve said, from the surplus re reserves, another 350 budget and finance and DMA has recommended that I try to get, or we try to get that balance up there in the roads of a million dollars. So we're working over on it. We have a three year plan, but we certainly have more money in roads than we've had in all the years uh, th th that I can remember. All right, the bulkheads, I'm gonna let Linda talk about that as well as what the plans and what kind of uh, detail we have for all three of these, and as well as replacement. So, Linda. Okay. Thank you, Linda. Okay, bulkheads. Um, it wasn't covered in the previous section. Um, bulkheads. There is a million fifty, one million fifty thousand, roughly, um, in contributions to the bulkheads. We are planning to do a total of around two thousand square feet at four twenty-five per square feet. Um, this year, so it's involves pintail and crab cake court will be done and bulkheads. As far as the roads, um, the roads like Steve suggested that they are, um, DMA has suggested that we put a contribution towards the roads. We do have roads to be repaired. We do have a list that we base it upon and that will be covered as well. Any other additional that may come up through the year. Get through this, John. Yeah, she's going to do that. Who's going to do that? Yeah, but yeah, Linda. Okay, moving on to capital. We have that slide. Josh, the capital slide's up there. It's right next to this slide. Perfect. Okay, as you can see, um, administration, um, renovations to administration building are in at 125000 We have a few items in aquatics as in the replacement cat controller, pump room door, handicap chair, and stairs to swim and racket, and burner, beach club um, cover for the pool, um, pool furniture, which is the standard that's put in every year, a new pool vacuum for sports core, a roof at the swim and racket building, and a sand filter at swim and racket. As far as beach club, um, there's uh, several items that are need to be replaced as far as kitchen equipment, golf maintenance, the irrigation was removed from this year, and we are keeping in the sprayer, a front deck mower, and the Jacobson rough mower. Public works is going to be replacing their dump trailer, which is approximately around 15 years old. And the Yacht Club is requesting some material for their banquet as far as 
catering and for the tables and chairs outdoor. Okay, Linda, let me just jump in. So when you look down at the bottom where Steve summarized, approximately $500,000 is the total. If you put that into perspective on what our depreciation contribution is, and Steve calls it a contribution, and he's right, more than it's more than just a depreciation, but it comes out close. We're going to put in, Steve, what, about a million seven in this yeah. proposed budget? So we have a million seven going in, 500,000 is what we're looking for to spend. So you can see we're building up our reserves with that, right? This does up on the top, the renovation for the admin building. I mean, we've replaced the, we, the, the police station, the clubhouse, um, this admin building in here, we're putting something together. Um, it's been fully depreciated and it needs some work. So in that 500,000 is replacement and we have maintenance that we've been doing over the last three years. Okay. We did the roads, three roads. Mm -hmm. oh, I saw a cover yeah. bird. You want to do the roads? Did. Did did. Three miles, 100,000? Uh -huh. Okay, great. Uh -huh. All right, so that pretty much ties everything together. I. The only other thing I have to say, uh, obviously we'll take any questions, is that within this budget also, you've heard about mailboxes over the last several months. Uh, there is maintenance that we are actually starting this year. Uh, in fact, Linda's going to run that project for us. Uh, and obviously with Clint and Eddie and Obi, we, we, we will take it out of the maintenance favorability since we didn't have it budgeted for this year I'm in now, but we also have continuation built into the maintenance uh, for mailboxes in this proposed budget as we continue on that. The T-Docs we talked about, the pickleball courts, we hope to get them in uh, within the next budget, but they've already been uh, allocated in this, uh, this current year. The employee payroll study light, um, I am actually working with them, uh, and I know Colette, uh, our president, wanted to continue on that and update from what we did three, four years ago just on the DMA light. So, I believe that I have that covered in this budget. I'm trying to get an estimate from the consulting firm, but I think I have it covered. If not, we'll, there'll be a slight increase. All right, that's what the team has. That's what I have. We, we are open to any questions uh, on the budget. Any questions? No questions. Josh, did you get any questions, any type-ins or anything? Nothing in the chat, no hands up on the Teams meeting. Okay, so I do see we got about 20, 20 something people out there. I do appreciate that you spent the time to go to listen or, or you know review this with us. Um, please, if you do have any questions, send it to info at oceanpines.org. Um, and Steve, myself, Linda, or the entire, we will we will answer them. But if you have any questions or also <laughs> send them to Josh and I'll promise you we'll, one way or another on this budget, we'll get back to you with, with, with answers. All righty. If nothing else, I mean, I, our team's here. We, we will sign off. Thank you very much.